1981, I, uh, it was established that omega-3 is an essential fatty acid, is, a, is an essential nutrient. And it says that means you must have it. And I'll give you a complete definition later. And 90, that 99% of the population gets less than what they need for optimum health. There are only a few sources of them because they're, they're closer to the poles. It's where, where the foods are richer in them. And there, so there's only a few sources. And most oils are rich in omega-6, but low in omega-3. And I found out omega-3 is the most sensitive of all of the essential nutrients, very easily damaged by light, oxygen, and heat. So it's a nightmare to work with, and it needs a lot of care. And um, the richest source that's easily available for omega-3 is linseed or flax. And uh, then the idea then was, okay, Let's make flaxseed oil. It's the hardest oil to make under protection from light, oxygen, and heat. In other words, with health in mind. And if we can pull that off, then any other oil we would ever want to make with health in mind would be a piece of cake. So we worked on the hardest part first. And then I, there's a saying that the goal defines the journey. You know, if you know what your goal is, then there is a journey to get to your goal. If your goal is somewhere else, then you're going to be on a very different goal. So my goal for making oils with health in mind was very different from the industry's goal of making oils that have a long shelf life. And, that, and it all occurred to me, oh my God, if we could make oils with health in mind and bring them back into people's diets, we could help almost everybody. And I got so excited. I mean, I got so excited. It's like, and that was the driver be, be, behind the work that I've been doing for 40 years. And I'm still excited about it. It is unbelievable how much difference it makes when you, when you uh, raise the standards of the oils you take. 1986, I wrote my first book. It was called Fats and Oils. And that same year, we began to work with flaxseed oil. It used to be called linseed oil. We said, let's make a distinction between, between linseed oil that's good for painting furniture and flaxseed oil that is good for human health and is fresh and is not damaged. And so flaxseed oil made with health in mind came out in 1986. 1989 got another big surprise. <laughs> I became omega-6 deficient on using flaxseed oil as my only source. And that's because the people I worked with said it's the best source of both essential fatty acids. I didn't think that was true, but I didn't have any research evidence to draw on. So I did the experiment on myself. I used only flax oil as my fat and oil. And within uh, uh, three months, I had dry eyes, skipped heartbeats, arthritis-like pain in my finger joints, and thin papery skin. Those are classic omega-6 deficiency symptoms. And I reversed it with sunflower seeds because sunflower seeds are very rich in omega-6 and have no omega-3 in them. So I got the oil balance back in my body. And so the thought occurred to me, we should make, <laughs> I don't want to make an oil that can make people sick if they, if they use it exclusively. So let's make a better balanced blend with all the good that you need from fats and none of the bad that you should avoid. And then I revised the book. It's now called Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill because there literally are two completely opposite stories on fats. And until you understand that, they'll always, be confused. They, they'll always be confusing. But once you know that, you just have to figure out which ones heal and bring them in and which, was, which ones kill and make sure you don't bring them in. Make sure you, you make an oil change. And then in 1994, we designed, made, and distributed an oil blend. And then from 95 on, I, for 15 years, I was on the road six to nine months, traveled to Europe and Asia and North America and Africa and educated people on fats and health. There's the book. Uh, it says 150,000 in print. It's actually 250,000 now, uh, but that's what the book looks like. Okay, so essential nutrients. I told you I was going to give you a definition. There's a definition of essential nutrients that came from researchers and is very specific. It's a three-part definition. And number one is that you must bring that nutrient in from food or supplement because you can't make it in your body from anything else, but you must have it to, to live and be healthy. Number two, if you get too little, you lose your health. You get deficiency symptoms. They are degenerative in nature. They get worse with time. And if you get too little for too long, you die. 
These are key body construction materials. You have to have them. You can't build a house called the body if you don't, don't get all of them. And the third part is if you return enough of the missing essential nutrient before you die, because death by definition is not reversible, then all of the problems that come from not getting enough are reversed. And why is that? Because life knows exactly what to do with each of these essential nutrients. Once we've taken responsibility to make sure enough of them land in our body so life can do that job. So that definition fits, uh, uh, includes 42 essential nutrients. It's the researcher's definition. This is not a marketing definition. In marketing, people call things essential that are not essential, and it helps to know the difference. 18 minerals, 13 vitamins, nine essential amino acids from proteins, and two essential fatty acids are the 42 essential nutrients. The, so the essential fatty acids uh, are the essential nutrients from lipids. By the way, there are no essential nutrients in carbohydrates. So carbohydrates from that perspective are the least important food because there's nothing in carbohydrates that you can't get elsewhere. Energy you can get from fats, but you can't get the essential fatty acids from, lip, from, from carbohydrates. You have to have oils to get them. And they're, the, it, they're two key building blocks. Both are plant-based. The omega-3 is called alpha-linolenic acid. It's abbreviated ALA. It has three double bonds, which makes it super, super sensitive. It is five times more chemically sensitive than the other essential fatty acids. And its essentiality was established by Holman, uh, I think actually it's Tolman, <laughs> in 1981. And we are now getting 16% of the levels of omega-3s that we got in 1850. And in 1850, the levels were already too low. It is the most widespread essential nutrient deficiency of our time. It is super sensitive to damage by light, oxygen, and heat, and requires a lot of care. The other essential fatty acid is omega-6, linoleic acid, or we abbreviate LA. It has two double bond, so two double bonds, so if you have three double bonds, it's five times more sensitive to damage if you, than you only have two double bonds. That was essential. That was known to be essential by 1929. And, it's in, and then there's a little history. About 1900 mass production of, of oil, that industry began, began to replace cottage industry of making oils. Our omega-6 intake has doubled since that time. And our omega-3 levels have gone down to one-sixth. So the balance has been completely messed up. And the omega-6s are damaged by processing uh, and by food preparation, especially frying and deep frying. <music>